You are now listening to the Going North Podcast with your host, author and speaker, Dom Bregman. And every Monday and Thursday, you're going to hear the voice of a different author share their stories, expertise, and their struggles that they had to overcome in life to leave you inspired to get more out of your life. Be sure to not only listen to this episode, but share with others, connect with the authors, and always advance others to advance yourself. Now let's get on with the show. And today on the Going North podcast, where we bring some fabulous humans from across the globe. Today is another one of those special occasions, baby. That's right. That's right. Special occasion because we got a special guest in the build, baby. Special guest with all the cherries on top and all the whipped cream. Once again, folks, because this guest right here is an internationally recognized leading expert on civility in the workplace. You heard that right, folks, civility in the workplace. She's the CEO of Civility Experts Incorporated, and she's also a compelling public speaker, 16-time, 16-time published author. And her most recent book, Civility at Work, and a two-time international best-selling book, The 30% Solution, How Civility at Work Increases Retention, Engagement, and Profitability. So let's give it up for the expert herself, the one and only Dr. Lou Bayer. How are you doing today, ma'am? Hi there. Just fine. Thank you. There we go. Fine with the capital F, I bet. <laughs> yes. There we go. We can turn the fine into fabulous. Sure can. Fantastic. That's right. With all of Dr. Lou's fans, indeed. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So as with all introductions, it's not allowed to be five days long. So mind filling in any cavities I missed about you? Oh, just um, I guess I'm a really proud to be kind of a mentor to 500 or so affiliates in 48 countries around the world. So lots of we're doing this F theme, right? So lots of foot soldiers teaching civility all around the world. Oh, okay. There we go. Foot soldier swag across the world, 48 countries. I'm assuming you're probably a wonderful role model for ladies out there looking to kick butt in the world. Yeah, I, I, I hope so. And we don't, we don't do a lot of kicking, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's contrary to, to civility, but no kicking or biting or slapping, but lots of um, <laughs> talking and teaching. And um, yeah, it's, it's really incredible work and um every day we learn a lot and hopefully help a lot uh there you go with all the help and that's what i'm talking about so what led you to really just take the bull by the horns and be a civility expert like i'm pretty sure there may have been other interests that picked your curiosity before civility um well i, I you know work different jobs and um the job before i started this business teaching civility was a I was director of operations for a hotel chain and people when they're on vacation seem to behave badly and <laughs> hotels are long hard work and if you've ever worked hospitality it's midnights and weekends and you know people are not very kind and you know employers are always a bit kind of stressed and uh, it's just hard work but people were very unkind to each other both patrons and staff and employers and um, about halfway through my second Second year in that job, um, I just had an up and I started a business with a friend of mine at the time. Teaching manners is how we started out. Table manners and golf etiquette, wedding etiquette, you know, children's courtesy camp and those kind of things. And then it didn't take very long to realize that you can teach people all the rules and all the manners in the world. But if they really don't respect each other, which is what civility is, then no amount of rules are actually going to make it easier for us to live together. Yeah, you can say that again, because you can make rules all day. Heck, laws are passed almost every day that a lot of folks are not aware of. And even with you making rules out there, folks got to be aware and have some kind of decency and common sense and just some regular love for their fellow man and woman. That's right. Yeah. And that's what civility is. It's about um, you know, we're always explaining to people that respect isn't something you should have to earn. 
respect is something that everybody's equally deserving of because we're human and on the planet. And, you know, trust is something different, but civility is about respect. And so it's about valuing others. And um, like you've just said, it, it doesn't matter how many rules there are if people don't really truly believe that other people are deserving and, and have value. It, it Rules really don't mean anything. Ah, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe civility is actually something you can measure too, right? It sure is. Thank you for that. So I think one of the reasons people don't take manners very seriously is because they think it's about, you know, just be nice or don't wear white after Labor Day or eat the shrimp with the little fork. And really, it, that's not it at all. So civility is a measurable competency. It's about social intelligence and cultural competence. It's about systems thinking and continuous learning. And there's you know, so many um, university-based pieces of research and assessment saying that about 85% of our long-term success in life and work is our social skills. So it doesn't matter how many languages you have, how many degrees you have, how much money you have. The fact is if, if you can't make people feel valued in your presence and people don't wanna be around you, um, you're not gonna go very far for very long. Yeah, I can say that again. It's kind of the reason why I feel like a lot of people who read the Out of Fr How to Win Friends and Influence People book, I feel like the people recommend that because those the skills in there are what help people get to where they want to go in life and making folks a lot better than what they can be from the get-go so <laughs> it feels it feels like that's something that needs to be added back into the curriculum i agree and, and that book is really about building trust it's about you know showing people that you're service oriented and that you care about them and that it's not just smiling because you're supposed to smile or you know going through the motions you have to be authentic and you have to be sincere and you have to give not expecting anything in return and that's the real this kind of silent influence uh, i think a lot of people don't really understand that until they experience from somebody else you know how can that person with little money or little education be so powerful in terms of influence and that's what it's about building trust that's right indeed that's right indeed that's the thing about trust it takes so long to build yet so easily toppled it's such a shame mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's right yeah and that's part of civility too um because one of the things we teach people is you can't always please everybody you can't know what every person of every culture and every generation or gender expects in terms of social interaction not everybody likes a handshake not everybody likes eye contact you know you're not going to please everyone but at least you could learn to repair so when you make a mistake if you're paying attention you can learn to apologize in in the appropriate way to me trust is about more as much about the repair and what you do after there's been a breach of trust um, is as important as building trust in the first place ah that's right learn to repair yes indeed that's some gold right there indeed because i feel like that's where a lot of us humans can be on default mode if we just come up from a place of authenticity and learn to really repair it's like oh i may be placing my legs in the wrong spot if i'm in a certain country and maybe forgetting this part of etiquette so with that wonderful theme of repair what do you think might be something folks can do to help keep that in the forefront of their minds when they're around others when they may well, Go ahead. yeah thank you i'm sorry I'm, i'll get excited i didn't mean to interrupt you but um the i would say the one key thing is is presence so because of technology and we have our phones and our face you know most of us don't look up so we're really not attentive and no matter where you are in the world or you know on an airplane or at a funeral or you know dropping a child off for school at you know your grandfather's birthday it doesn't matter where you are and with who the trick is being present so you know putting away the distractions really being in the room with people paying attention and you don't even if you don't know the people but you're attentive for a moment you can pick up on their nonverbal and verbal cues and you can tell if somebody's upset or in distress or injured or hungry or sad. And we're human beings. So, you know, once you pick up on that cue, 
to be empathetic, to have some compassion, to you know, do what you can from a service orientation to support or help somebody else. I mean, that's all it takes. You don't have to read every book and understand every nuance and etiquette guideline for every situation and country. You just have to be human and be present. There you go. That's right. From the civility chief head handy woman right here, baby. That's right. Helping you repay. <laughs> that's right. Indeed. That's right. Indeed. And that's something that we all need to be reminded of and just to be present in all situations and with all the distractions out there that can be difficult. So what do you think may be the biggest challenge in addition to just the distractions around us from some folks forgetting civility? Because that seems to be a major issue in today's world for some strange reason. Well, I would say the next biggest problem is um, self-focus and, and some self-indulgence. You know, there's, I think from television and reality TV and so on, it seems many people are, are so busy seeking attention for themselves and, you know, kind of clawing to be noticed and 15 minutes of fame and big dramatics, um, you know, lots of causing a scene and um, it's, there seems to be a lot of focus on kind of that fleeting I, I don't know what the term for it is but it's just this self-focus and we really need to focus more on what's going on around us and other people around us and um, not be so concerned about having all the attention ourselves all the time you know where where I live for example it's it's shocking and, and you um, I know that you've probably seen or heard about this before but it's shocking to me that you know as 60 year old woman can be beaten to death by four people in an all glass bus stop while there's 40 people standing around and 27 people driving by and they all have phones in their hand but people don't pay attention nobody noticed or they don't care enough or you know it's that that kind of thing is shocking to me and that aspect of human kindness you know just to you know you don't want to get involved, use your phone then, call for help, you know, do something. It's it's just shocking to me how um, self-focused we are and this lack of presence. It's really, it's um, disappointing from a humankind point of view. Yeah, I can say that again. It's like we went from bystander effect to how much attention I can get. <laughs> I guess attention stander effect maybe might be the new term for it because if like you're right like folks having their phones out possibly recording the situation just to throw it on their social media feed just to blow it up for news resources later and really it's just like can somebody at least have the decency to step in and stop the beating or at least call for help or something because that's because everybody doesn't need that footage that's right yeah and and it's interesting too because then how many people are, are watching that? You know, we're, we're talking all the time now, it's the media's fault, this, uh, what I would describe as a civility crisis. But, you know, we could shut, shut the television off. We could shut YouTube off. You know, we can, we don't have to buy into all of that, but we're just so afraid of missing something again in this self-focus. It's, um, you know, we really need that few minutes of just shutting out, all of that technology and focusing on being human. And it's difficult to say out loud, I guess some people might be shocked by it. Of course, it's devastating that people would, would die from pandemic, but the one of the, if you can say there's anything positive about the pandemic, the idea that we have to actually stay home a little bit and um, focus on our families and, and the people close by our neighbor and community, that's, that's not all bad. Yeah, yeah, especially those who can actually take it, because the thing about the pandemic, it forced a lot of people to really do some self-reflection if they could even stand it, because a lot of people, their depression escalated because they thought they were invincible, but then the pandemic came, and then the mirror came right in their face and realized, oh, all righty, I guess I'm not as good as I thought I was, and mm -hmm. led to just sometimes folks just finding ways to be indecent to other people, and maybe not even even like the thought of just not wearing a mask or keeping their distance from other people early on, especially still nowadays, even after the vaccines are out there in certain places of the world is just kind of crazy how that this pandemic escalated a lot of things and just reminds us like, Hey, we got to do better. 
That's right. And, and you make such a good point because it is very interesting that, you know, how it's so harmless to wear a mask and it's so harmful not to. And, you know, as human beings that if we knew we we're putting even one other person at risk, what, what's the harm in taking care of each other? And to me, the bigger picture, that's what it's about. You know, civility is that service orientation. You know, we work for each other um, and people just forget um, that, you know, that's at the root of it. That's what the rules were initially for to protect us in health and safety. You know, we have driving rules to keep us safe too. And people ignore that and text when they drive, you know, it's that self-indulgence, you know, my checking a text is more important than the safety of people in 27 cars around me. You know, it's that selfish kind of, um, it's all about me attitude. I think that's a big problem these days. That's right. Stop making it about me. Make it about CE, baby. And call the, the civility experts. That's what I'm talking about, indeed. <laughs> Heck, maybe even focus on civility of self, <laughs> if that's even possible. Like, we got self-care going around as something popular for obvious reasons, because a lot of folks need to do it. But hey, like, be probably even make civility about yourself and making sure that you two are being civil to the person that you want to be or heck even making sure you become the person that you making sure that you don't become the person that you don't want to be because there's also that as well that's right yeah we often say that civility starts at home and so you know you have to take care of yourself and you have to take care of your you know your home and your family and um you know part of being a good citizen is not not putting yourself in a situation where um, you know you can't take care of others because you can't take care of yourself. And I know that it's not as easy as that. I just mean generally, um, to your point, civility starts at home, right? So um, it's just about a little bit of eating well and exercising and you know whatever you have to do, right? And I know in a, in a, that'd be great if everybody had all of those opportunities and all of those resources, but it's um, you got to start somewhere. It's not an easy conversation all the time. That's right. Indeed. That's right. And another thing is probably not easy is starting your own business, let alone being in business for, I believe, 22 years now, if I'm not mistaken. Right. That's right. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. And it's um, it's not easy, but um, I feel really privileged. Um, you know, we've been able to make a good livelihood and, and with our affiliates to support the businesses of, and now I think 510 affiliates around the world. So other people who start a business using our curriculum and want to do the same kind of good work in teaching that we're trying to do every day. And yeah, it's amazing, but it's not easy. I tell you some days. <laughs> That's right. So since you're a lovely lady in business and a lot of women out there are putting on their crowns and starting their own businesses. Any pieces of advice, any three things that you wish you knew at the beginning that you now know now that someone should know when they're starting a business of their own? Sure. Um, so, I mean, the first thing I learned was, you know, you can listen to all kinds of people and take advice, you know, ask advice and whatever else. But at the end of the day, um, you really just have to trust your own instinct uh, because nobody's going to care for the business and love the business and at the end of the day be up at five and go to bed I mean it's you that's going to have to do it so I remember in the beginning uh, feeling like I had to take everybody else's advice and that was a mistake in a lot of cases because if it's your calling and your passion then you know you just got to trust your instinct and trust that voice that's talking to you um, that was the first hard lesson I learned and uh, the second one was that uh, you have to surround yourself with like-minded people, you know, people who believe in what you want to do, people who are also, um, you know, entrepreneurs or business people, people who can uh, relate to what you're doing, because um, it's, it's a difficult road. Um, and you work sometimes 24-7, not always, but in the beginning, it's hard work, and, and you have to uh, have to make some difficult choices. And that's the third thing I learned was that, you know, I've, I've often heard people say you can't have everything. And I think you can have everything. You just can't have it all at once. So if your outlook is that I'm going to give this up now 
um, maybe I can't see my friends as much, or maybe I'll have to get a babysitter a couple nights, or, you know, you have to give something up some of the time, but it's not all of the things all of the time, right? So it's about hard choices, and that's okay, right? It's, um, you have to forgive yourself um, for wanting to be better and do better. Um, it's a, yeah, it's not easy, but it's worth it. Ah, uh, yeah, it's not easy, but it's worth it indeed. And heck yeah, definitely so right. Definitely need other people that kind of get you in the way. Kind of like, uh, heck, even, like as soon as you mention just making sure you network with other people and connect with other people in business as well, which might be the mastermind principle, like, because it can be lonely out there, or at least it seems lonely out there in the entrepreneurial space and getting around people who may be a little further ahead or heck even alongside with you still in the same boat in the starting phase it's like we need each other and making sure that you have to realize that tough decisions are going to be ahead and just have to be ready to make them that's right that's right and it's um you know for well you know a little bit about business too but but for me it's never a dull moment you know one day i'm i'm still after 22 years in the business sometimes you don't have people to to help you around you for whatever reason. And sometimes I'm still making photocopies and stapling handout worksheets for workshop training that I'm doing that day. And then, you know, five hours later, I'm on a plane and I'm headed to Rwanda to visit Kigali Peace Museum and take some training myself. Like it's never the same day twice. It's, um, you know, so you have to be change ready and you have to be open-minded and flexible. I think that's, that's a big deal. There you go. Be change ready. Indeed. That's what I'm talking about. That's right. Indeed. Because it may not be quarters and bills anymore. It might become Bitcoin the next day. You have to be changed. <laughs> yeah, <ready. laughs> That's right. Uh-huh. Ah, yes, indeed. So since this is far from your first rodeo, is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often when you're in interviewee mode on these podcasts? Oh, no. Um, I mean, I guess, uh, people sometimes say, well, 22 years, you know, like I'll be 55 in October and people say, are you, aren't you going to slow down? I still travel about 300 days a year. And, um, you know, people say, is it really true that when you love what you do, it's not work? And I would say, yes, that's actually true. Um, I, I don't feel like it's work and I don't feel old. And if I can still travel and do the work and teach and write and promote the the books and the mission, I'm happy to do it. So I, I hope that 20 years from now, I'm doing an interview with you again. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about indeed. And I'm so glad you say you didn't feel old because sometimes I hear folks in the 20s saying, man, we are old. And I'm like, you <laughs> blasphemous <laughs> human. Stop that blasphemy. Like that's this. Right. Like, my goodness, this lady's got a birthday in October coming up, y'all. And it's like, she <laughs> says she doesn't feel old. So come on now. Like, stop playing. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yes, indeed. And be sure to send her some chocolate on her birthday in October. It don't matter what day. Just send chocolate every day. She might like it. That's right. I will. <laughs> 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 Won't be able to fit in the plane seat all that chocolate every day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's probably true. But hey, you probably work out or do something to keep yourself fit and ready to take on the world. So you should be fine. I do. Yeah, I try to. Yeah, yeah. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. So my goodness. So since you're all go, 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 it seems like, and a lot of your stuff is probably virtual now, thanks to the pandemic. What keeps you, I would have to say, what keeps you energized and able to still keep going? What because there may be some self-care things you may do that other folks may want to learn from Dr. Luce. Like, hey, what does she do to keep herself decompressed? Or what does she do to keep herself calm, ready to take on the world? You know what? I'm a big reader. Um, I can't remember the last time I read anything nonfiction, by the way. But um, I, I find that learning is what keeps me energized and um, excited about life and work. You know, there's so many big brains and brilliant people doing amazing work. And I, I just feel like I know so little about 
everything and anything. And, you know, first thing in the morning, I try to spend about 30 minutes uh, reading. And now sometimes if I'm, you know, jogging or something, I'll listen to a podcast or whatever. But, you know, I think there's this connectedness we have now with technology. It's incredible that you can listen to a Harvard professor you know, do a lecture about the brain, or you can listen to somebody else talk about, you know, how they're, you know, reforesting, like, there's just so much exciting, good things going on in the world. So I like to listen or read, you know, something new and good. It kind of keeps me motivated. Ah, sweet. There we go. That's what I'm talking about indeed. Yes, and I'm talking about indeed any book recommendations from your listening. Heck, even a podcast recommendation. It doesn't even have to be this one. <laughs> well, of course, I recommend yours. But, um, you know, I'm following right now a, a man called Joe Dispenza, who, who talks about the brain, you know, the capacity of the brain. And um, from an educator's point of view, a teacher, I really love Jim Quick. K-W-I-K. He teaches people how to learn faster and absorb more when they're learning. Um, you know, there's, uh, I don't know, there's, there's just so much. And I, um, Robin Sharma, I like, and Brene Brown, like there's all these really great uh, researchers too that, you know, I'm kind of a, a nerd, I guess, bookworm. <laughs> um, you know, but it's, um, I don't know. I, I think if people like you, take the time to create this kind of content that if I have the time, I'm going to listen to it. Like it's somebody's done all the hard work, right? Find interesting people, ask interesting questions. How can you not be excited about learning? Heck yeah, that's right. That's what the L and Lou stands for learning. That's right. That's, yeah, that's right. That's right. She loves to learn y'all. That's right. And she's an expert who loves excellence too, y'all. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Might have an older name acronym after this. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We can have the W stand for wonderful. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Sweet. Oh, coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive. And that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again, but this time in the current year of 2021, with all of your knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself? I would say, say yes and figure it out later. Ah, there we go. There we go. It did say yes and figure it out later. That's right, folks. Say yes and imagine a trapezoid right in front of you. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you're just fearful and you don't take chances and you wait. And well, we'll just let's see what happens. And oh, I shouldn't go to Australia or whatever. I'd say if I was that young again, I would just say yes to every opportunity and figure it out later, right? Uh, right, indeed. That's what I'm talking about. Sweet. So for those who want to say yes and hear more and read more about all the wonderful stuff you're doing, what's the best way for folks to reach out to you? Um, I have a uh, site civilityexperts.com or lewbayer.com, L-E-W-B-A-Y-E-R.com. And if they're looking for books, um, they could just Google me or go to Amazon. There's 15 or 16 different books on Amazon now. Oh, uh, yeah, sweet 16, baby. That's what I'm talking about <laughs> right there. Yes, indeed. Well, there you have it, folks. The good doctor herself. Grab all of her wonderful books. Tell your friends about it. Tell your camels about it. Tell your cats about it. Heck, even put it next to a cucumber and say, this thing is cooler than this cucumber on your social media posts and let Lou know that she's doing some awesome work, folks. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So any parting words before we close up shop? Um, no, thank you. It's, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate your time. Thank you. This is your host, Don Brightman. Hope you enjoyed what you just heard. And if you really did do me a solid and leave a review, if you're listening on Apple podcasts on YouTube, wherever you're listening to and subscribe to hear more because more is coming your way to advance you further than before.